Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be reviewing WGU's new software engineering degree, which replaced the old software development degree. I've had a whole bunch of requests to do this video, so I decided I would just go ahead and do it. So if you don't mind before we get started, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to get 100,000 subscribers this year. Super, super appreciate it if you could sub. And just to give you an idea of what we're going to cover in this video, we're gonna compare the new software engineering degree with the old software development degree. We're gonna compare the new software engineering degree with the current computer science degree. We're gonna to touch on the two separate tracks in the software engineering degree. We're gonna look at the possible cost of completing the software engineering degree, assuming we use study.com to transfer courses in, and we're gonna see how much it would cost if we go at an average speed versus an accelerated speed. And finally, I'm gonna kind of give my thoughts on the new software engineering degree and why I think it's better than the previous software development degree. And I do wanna say before we get started, I released a course on how to get into IT as fast as possible. It's a super in-depth, hands-on course, and we've had a whole bunch of success with it. I'll put a few testimonials as well as a link in the description in, if you're interested in getting to IT really, really quickly. So getting right into it. For those people who don't already know, this degree is for WGU. WGU is an online accredited college, which allows you to complete as many courses as you want in a one-term period. So if you happen to finish all of your coursework in one term, you, you only pay for one term and you just get a relatively cheap bachelor's degree. So, so getting right into it, we're going to compare the current software engineering degree versus the old software development degree. So what you're looking at here on the screen on the left, this is the new software engineering degree. On the right is the old software development degree. I'm not going to point out every single difference, but basically the things that are dark red on the left are things that exist in the software engineering degree that don't exist in the old development degree. And the things on the right that are in green exist in the software development degree. So we can kind of see on the left, um, some things that really stick out to me in the new software engineering degree is we now have like emphasis on front end and back end development. And I kind of looked into these classes a little bit on the front end. It looks like they cover those basic things like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I kind of would have liked to see some react in there, but you know, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but I think it's really cool I believe there's an emphasis on Java in the back end courses. I like that they added a health, fitness, and wellness in the software engineering degree as well. That is important in our field since it's really easy to be sedentary. They still have mobile application development. I think they might have upgraded the class to make it Android specific. I'm not really sure. But one thing that really stands out in the software engineering degree is the addition of, so we see cloud foundations here. And I believe to pass this class, you need to get the AWS certified practitioner, which I believe is the entry level cloud cert for AWS. And I think this is super, super important in the software engineering degree because there's so many services and platforms and stuff that you can leverage in the cloud to help you develop software better. And in the real world, this is being made use of so, so much. So I think it's really important and a great idea for them to include it in their curriculum. They still have software design and quality assurance. It looks like they might've upgraded that course. And another thing that really stands out to me is the software security and testing. Um, I looked into this course a little bit more through WGU's course description kind of PDFs, I guess and they cover APIs and API testing as well, which is super, super important for software engineering. Like you pretty much everyone gonna use an API and I imagine you're gonna get a really good intuition of how REST APIs and APIs work in general after taking this class. That's my assumption. So it's pretty cool to see that they included that in this curriculum. Another thing that really stands out to me is version control. I wanna say, I don't like saying things are 100%, but more than likely, if you're a developer or a software engineer, 100% of the time, you're gonna be using some kind of version control to keep track of your code. Whether that's GitHub, Azure DevOps, whatever, you're definitely going to use some kind of version control. And it's really, really good to kind of get used to using that before you actually start working because there's going to be you know, less of a learning curve and it's gonna be easy for you, not to mention make you more marketable. And I remember software one and software two in the software development and computer science degrees, pretty heavy emphasis on Java. I'm assuming they just upgraded those classes and turned them into something else, such as Java fundamentals, Java frameworks, and then advanced Java. I'm assuming these classes are kind of quote unquote new versions of the old software one and software two class. So very, very good, very cool changes. And jumping into comparing the new software engineering degree with the computer science degree, 
pretty much the same thing. All the stuff I talked about already on the left with software engineering, like the introduction to cloud and everything. And the major difference between computer science and the software engineering degree, software engineering degree looks to be really, really practically applicable with like a lot of nice applied things that you can actually take and use in the workforce immediately. Whereas computer science is a bit more theory based and a bit more, I guess, algorithm in theory heavy. So we have you know, discrete math to data structures and algorithms to computer architecture. We have calculus as well, which it's not like you can take these things and always, you know, be able to directly apply them. But these things can be really important and it's good to understand them. It's just not as applicable, I guess, as you know, some of the stuff in the new software engineering degree. Whether or not like which one's better, kind of the idea is computer science, in my opinion, kind of remains the gold standard um, when you're talking about tech because it gives you a super, super strong foundation to build anything else on top of. And if somebody has a computer science degree, kind of the way that works is people kind of assume they're able to learn whatever else they need to know to become a successful developer or a successful software engineer. Like the computer science degree as it is now, like it doesn't look like there's any version control. It doesn't look like there's any distinction between front end and back end. But picking those things up should should be relatively trivial for you if you're able to get through data structures and algorithms, right? Discrete math, calculus. And then taking a look at the two different tracks, the new software engineering degree has a C-sharp track and a Java track. The classes are almost the same with the exception of like some of the Java classes are swapped out with a C-sharp class. And I believe there's like one other extra class. So if you just go to Indeed, right, and search, this is not the greatest you know, indicator of which one's quote unquote better. Like, but if you go to Indeed and you search Java, there's almost twice as many jobs as if you search C Sharp. And that's not to say if you search C Sharp, you're, you're not gonna have a good career, you can't find a job or something like this. The reality is if you can code in any language, it's super easy, if not trivial, to pick up a second language because you already understand the flow of, the, of your code and you understand all those basic data structures and input and output. So it's relatively trivial to kind of pick up a new syntax, right? So getting right into the cost, I'm going to talk about cost in regards to heavily utilizing study.com to kind of get through your degree. Study.com is an educational organization. By the way, I have a discount code for them. It's Josh Matikor. You can get 30% off the first three months. Basically, you can sign up for study.com. You can do certain classes that apply to your degree. The idea is you do all those classes at study.com and then you transfer that transcript into WGU and it knocks off a whole bunch of the courses for the software engineering program or whatever program you're doing. And the reason that this is useful is study.com is really, really cheap on a monthly basis as compared to WGU. So WGU, the software engineering degree, every term, which is six months, is about $3,600. And if you divide one term by six, you end up with about $604 per month, as opposed to study.com, which is only $140 per month if you use the discount code. So the idea is if you want to save a lot of money, you sign up for study.com, use the discount code, do as many classes as you can to transfer into the software engineering degree or whatever your degree you're doing, transfer those in and then register at WGU and then do the rest of the classes at WGU. The idea is you can get a whole bunch of cheap credits from study.com and then just kind of take care of the rest as fast as you can at WGU. So kind of seeing how much it might cost for someone going at a normal speed versus somebody going really, really fast, assuming you're going super, super fast and doing doing four classes per month. At study.com, doing four classes a month, you're gonna end up spending about $1,450 to do all of the possible transferable classes. And then assuming you have one term left at WGU, that's about $3,600. And then you'll end up paying around $5,075. Assuming you're going super, super fast, you spend about half a year at study.com and then another half a year or one term at WGU. And then same thing, assuming you're going at an average speed of two classes per month, you're gonna spend around $1,820 at study.com and then two terms at WGU, which ends up being about $7,250 for a grand total of $9,070 if you kind of take your time with it. So super fast using study.com, you can finish, pay about $5,000, average speed, maybe around $9,000 assuming you take, you know, assuming you spend a whole year inside of WGU. Of course, this will vary a little bit, but just to kind of give you an idea. And some final thoughts on why I kind of think the new software engineering degree is better. 
again, the distinction between front end and back end and, and kind of introducing those two things together, I think is really, really good. I'm really glad they added a cloud component to it as well, because that's super ingrained in software engineering and software development these days. There's so many cloud centric developer tools. It just makes sense to add it. It's really, really good. They added something for APIs again, super, super important today. I'm glad they added version control as well, because everyone uses version control. I use it. I used it today. All developers use it, so it just makes sense to add it. And all of these things kind of make a nice recipe for you to be able to create a nice portfolio that potential employers can look at or that you can demo during your interviews. Like all of those kind of cloud things like front end development using APIs. And if you're having a hard time deciding between software engineering degree or computer science degree, just ask yourself, you know, one, are you are you okay with mathematics? And number two, are you okay with the opportunity cost of the computer science degree? Because if you answered yes to both of those things, then just go ahead and do the computer science degree. But if you want to get a development centric degree relatively quickly, and you don't really want to deal with ramping up your math to, to do calculus, and you don't really want to deal with discrete mathematics too, then software engineering degree is really, really good. It's full of really, really useful things and you can have a successful career with both. Yeah, thanks so much for watching. We will see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.